Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. <clears throat> um, today is September 18th and we're coming at you with some uh, uh, news from the more of the libertarian perspective. Uh, in my upper left-hand corner, I have uh, Tim Everett, our Screaming Eagle of Freedom. He is a pilot in the state of California. And uh, joining us also uh, in my upper right-hand corner is Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty, uh, retired engineer in the state of California. And I'll be your host, Jason McPhee, and uh, we'll, uh, <clears throat> before we jump into any of the topics, I just wanted to mention that uh, if you uh, have a story uh, related to uh, a loss of a, a business or a, a job due to COVID lockdowns or the riots. Uh, we'd love to hear about it. So you can send them to the uh, email address that's scrolling across the bottom of the screen. And uh, it, you might, uh, we might have you on the show if you're interested, uh, if you have, you know, if, if we can make that work. Also, <clears throat> if you have any comments during the show, you can send them there as well. And we might be able to address them in a bonus section at the end of the show. So that said, uh, let's jump right into the news of the day. Uh, you're still middle of uh, all kinds of uh, riots and the elections and uh, uh, just all kinds of crazy stuff still going on. Uh, but uh, uh, almost one of the craziest stories of all is, that's happened recently is that Trump has been nominated now for a Nobel Peace Prize, which I don't think anybody would have predicted at the beginning of his presidency, but he's actually had a couple of nominations. Uh, and uh, the, the key uh, nomination came from his brokering of, uh, 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 I guess, a peace accord between Israel and Bahrain and Israel and the United Arab Emirates. So <clears throat> these are, uh, it, this is really groundbreaking step towards peace in that region. Uh, it's not across the board yet, but it's much more progress than anybody has made in the past. And I, th I believe there was also... Uh, you know, he's also recently brokered some kind of a deal with uh, between Serbia and Croatia or something. That's where the other uh, uh, yes. uh, yeah peace uh, peace prize nomination comes from. Anyways, it, it's it's really interesting, especially given the fact that his predecessor got a Nobel Peace Prize and nobody's quite sure for what yet. So <laughs> well, after, after all of these years, after all of these years, it was Serbia. Jason, it was Serbia before you were, you're referring to, okay? It was Serbia and Kosovo. Oh, Kosovo. Oh, Serbia and Kosovo. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was um, going to ask, what was that uh, peace accord that Obama had uh, brokered that that came about uh, either just before he took office or right after he took office and had no time to do anything? I believe mean, um, it was just before he took office. Yeah, so that's, what was, that's uh, my recollection. Yeah, was, just, <laughs> yes. just before. And so, uh, you know, the, and he just got the, the, the Nobel Prize. So at this point, I'm not sure that the Nobel Prize really says a lot. I, I don't, you know, I mean, I, I think the, the brokerage of these peace accords by uh, Trump are, are definitely a good thing. I'm all, all for that. And I, I, I'm hoping that this this will be a, a long term uh, improvement in the region, and that we'll s stop this nonsensical, non never ending warfare over there. You know, mainly drone warfare and special forces, and uh, you know a few other things. I mean, you know, it's great practice for the military to kind of hone out their techniques and all that. Uh, but uh, you know, it's not too good if you live there. And uh, it's not too good if you're trying to um, to actually battle terrorism to keep creating new terrorists. But the, anyway, the um, yeah, I'm hoping they're good. But yeah, again, it it just contrasts with uh, the absolute nothing that was done by our uh, the the previous president, and uh, sh it, it shows, I, I guess, just a hypocritical. Uh, this um, association with the Republican Party. I mean, if you're a Republican, you can't win a Nobel Peace Prize no matter what. And if you're a Democrat, you get to the Nobel Peace Prize for absolutely zip. Doing so nothing. Yeah. So yeah. what's going on? You know. I mean. Okay. Nothing. You know if you know if you're <laughs> gonna go. 
if you're gonna go in by the Obama by the Obama standard, Trump should get a Nobel Peace Prize running away. Okay. Sure. Now I don't particularly like Donald Trump. Okay, because he he, he just says some things that are just drive me crazy at times. I mean, Jason, you know my strong feelings about him. <laughs> <laughs> we have spoke spoke many times about it. But the point is though, let us give the man credit when he deserves it. Okay, and I think he definitely deserves credit in this case. Barack Obama came to office. He did nothing in terms of peace. But yet 11 days into his presidency, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. For what? I'm still waiting to find out. And I'm still waiting to find out if there's something he did after it was awarded to say, well, okay, well, yeah, it was justified. What did Obama do? He did nothing. Well, well actually, he did quite a bit. I think he led the world in drone strikes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. And, and, he got the, and he got the Nobel Peace Prize, I guess, aspirationally for that. Okay? So if you're going to give, if we're going to use the Obama standard for giving out Nobel Peace Prize, then Trump have to get this running away. Okay? There should be no doubt about it. It should be a unanimous vote about uh, uh, for, for, this, for this particular one. Because I still don't know what the previous administration or what Barack Obama did to get the, the, the prize. 11 days into his presidency. I would like to know that. Please help me. Well, you, you know, aside from leading the world in drone strikes, I thought one of the most interesting uh, scenarios was when Rand Paul did a filibuster uh, during the Obama administration to try to get the Obama administration to say that they wouldn't use drones on citizens on American soil. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, American citizens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They literally wouldn't even say that they wouldn't stop there, and he had to do a filibuster for like a day. Uh, you know, so Rand Paul on the right side of that one in history, but uh, you, know, you know, it just, yeah, you know, you know, during the Obama administration, they killed three American citizens in drone strikes. You, you're aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. Three. Imagine that. Yeah. I mean, I know it was done. It was done on um, on foreign soil. I think one was in Yemen, or two was in Yemen, and one someplace else. But the fact of the matter is. They were American citizens, and Obama authorized the killing. So you know nobody, the, nobody raised a stink about that. Nobody. I mean, Leon, think about that for a second. Well, do you know, Leon, was the drone strike that got, uh, um, oh, gosh, what was that guy's name uh, or the gal's name, I guess, who who uh, released the footage of the drone strike on the television crew, I guess, and, and wound up getting thrown in jail? I can't remember uh, her name. Uh, Bradley Manning, or uh, oh yes, um, yes, um, he used he, he used to be Bradley Manning. He's now um something some other Manning. He's Chelsea. He's, Chelsea, Manning. Chelsea Manning. Yeah, he's Chelsea Manning. He's he's now female. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. They, I, I'm wondering if was that was that strike that was released was that also during uh, Obama's administration? I'm I'm not quite sure, but certainly that that came out. I think during during Obama's administration, I think. I, I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, yeah, I, I'm digressing. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a prominent drone strike that everybody might have seen on television. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Jeez, <laughs> yeah. yes. <clears throat> well, uh, as, as far as these things go, the one other aspect I wanted to bring up is just the, it's sort of the, the gaslighting, you know, that happens with the uh, uh, the media and the establishment and all these things. I mean, clearly Barack Obama was going into his presidency. He hadn't even achieved his records on drone strikes. <laughs> and yet he was being given this award. And I believe they said that the award was he was nominated at was just in the hopes that he would do great things. So, you know, it's yeah. kind of like you're running a race and you say, well, we're going to hand this award to you because we're pretty sure you're going to finish first. <laughs> so, Actually, somebody said it was aspirational, you know, aspirational, you know, yeah, Obama, the saint just came about and he's going to change the world and lead us to utopia. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, uh, if they can hand it out, can they take it back? Is there, I mean, is that, I don't know. Is that an option? <laughs> Well, you know, well that, you know, yeah. that, that have never happened, but at one time Hitler was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. That probably uh, would have been taken back if, if it was actually awarded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, speaking of things that should be taken back, and uh, you know, I think our, our freedom is getting to the point where we need to start thinking of taking that back from these lockdowns that we've been involved in with COVID. And one of the, there's a really interesting experiment that's playing out. And that's on the NFL gridiron. The uh, NFL, 
kicked off this last week. Uh, and they had a few stadiums where they actually had some fans in them, but most of the fans were empty. But you still have this situation of literally teams of 50-plus guys huddling and tackling each other for over two hours straight. And, you know, you can't think of a sport that's less social distance than football. So you have <laughs> of all of these fans sitting here watching these games that are on television. And the ratings are down this year, to be fair. But, but even that said, it's still fairly a draw of people watching while they're being told they can't go to work and yet you're watching these millionaires tackle each other out on a football field (laughs) 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 yeah well it's so essential i mean what would we do without them uh our whole fabric of society depends on these uh these uh big guys uh jumping on each other and you know, pushing each other around and, yes. uh, you know, what would we do without them? I mean, they're so <laughs> essential. I can't think of any other Activity. job and more essential or as essential as, as a football yeah. for the NFL. But, but, this, but this, this is the ridiculousness of the government deciding what is essential and what is not essential. Okay. There's this little saloon down the street. They can't open. All right. They hear so low or they think they can't open because I Governor Newsom get, says, well, you know. I can't get a haircut. I yeah, they want to get a haircut, okay? Yeah. Right, and maybe I because, need one myself, okay? And well, I'm, not even, I'm not even going to push on the guy that's cutting my hair. I'm yeah. probably, you know. There you go. I mean, he'll, he'll, touch, <laughs> he'll touch a little here and then a little there, but, right. uh, you know, we can, we can wear little, I don't know, mass or something. Or and he's not he going to touch with his hand. He's not going to touch yeah. with his hand. He's going to touch with some instrument that I'm sure he's going to Ex- sanitize. Yeah. yeah he'll but, you know, he cannot it. do that. He cannot yeah. do that. But some right. big guys making millions of dollars every year could get out there, no social distancing, no mass, but they mm-hmm. could bump around and beat around and jump around and do all sorts of things, and that's okay because that, I guess, is essential. This is the ridiculousness of the government yeah. making these decisions. I think Bill Barr said this week, all we have to do is, yes, we make some rules and let businesses figure out how to, how, how to manage this thing. And it could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Other businesses have done it. Costco, Home Depot, Target, all of them, Walmart, have figured out how to manage this thing. But nobody else could. There's only those that the government have decided are essential. They could figure out how to manage it. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, well, you know, one of the funniest things of all, I, I, uh, Gavin Newsom was interviewed this uh, week uh, on college football reopening in some places. And you know, one of the kings of the lockdown <laughs> in California, you know, he's been pretty free about locking things down and, and such. And and, uh, and yet he's saying that, uh, you know, at least in the interview I was hearing, he was saying that this college football you know, can be done safely, you know, you know, you're talking to once again, you know, all these guys tackling each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard to believe, you know, you're talking about something that's spread airborne, you know, but yet, you know, it's, it's something that could be done safely. So I don't know. You know it's, uh, yeah, but yeah. but yeah, but they got to close the beach for the surfers. The surfers yeah. can't surf safely. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah. they might and, uh, get too close. They might, they might float too close to one another. And get yeah. each other COVID, so we got to protect them from themselves. There, yeah. Yeah. and they could, and they could encourage, and they could encourage a mostly peaceful protest. You know, we could encourage yeah. that, oh, but that businesses, too, yeah. but businesses cannot open. Right. We, you know, one of the one of the interesting things about this uh, opening, though, is that it's truly, you know, going to be quite the experiment because, you know, they they are going to great lengths. I mean, if you trust, you know, them in honest about their data they have uh, they're putting everybody who's an employee on these chips so you know, they can tell where exactly everybody's been um they they so essentially while the people are there if somebody does present positive at some point everybody who's been in contact with that person in the building um but uh you know and so there will be a lot of data one way or another that comes out of this and further you know it's it's playing out on a national stage so you know, if things go bad, you know, and let's say there is an outbreak, you know, we're not, you know, extraordinarily likely, but let's say that it's a bad outbreak, and uh, that could actually set everybody back because everybody's watching this on a national stage. Uh, you know, uh, if, if, on the other hand, 
if nothing happens, see, right now I think they've said they've had less than you know less than ten people who've had COVID, you know, in the NFL players, I think. And so if nothing happens, then people can start scratching their heads and saying, why the hell are we not going out when all of these guys are, are doing this? But then there's a third possibility. Uh, maybe there's an outbreak, but nobody gets seriously ill. And in that case, that also starts to make you scratch your head. Well, you know, how serious is this then? You know, But the bottom line is it's something that's playing out. It's going to be hard for anybody to spin if the day is there and you're watching it. You know, and, and one way or another, this may be a bellwether for how the country goes for the next four or five months. Yeah, meanwhile, some uh, uh, parishioner or some uh, preacher in, I can't remember the state, but uh, he was against, I just saw this on Facebook, he was against the uh, wearing of masks for himself, and he had uh, open services, but uh, he said, if you want to wear a mask, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine, too. And so him and uh, like five other uh, of their church members came down with COVID, and the uh, the other ones recovered right away, and he went into ICU for a short while, and now he's out and recovering uh, himself. So, uh, you know, so the the mask Nazis are quick to point this, you know, poor dumb guy out, but uh, they they won't say anything about uh, all these uh, NFL players running around and the protesters and, and eight. 18,000 other examples of somebody. It's just that, boy, to be Christian today, you get picked on. Of course, without a doubt. That's the only, yeah. that's the only, that's the only place you can discriminate and nobody, nobody talks about it. It's, it's yeah. unbelievable. I'm talking I mean, about these. Happy. Uh, yeah. They're happy, talk- happy this guy got COVID and these other people yes. got COVID because it, you know, it, it, it's the perfect victim, you know, these horrible Christians and of so on and so forth. Talking and talking about hypocrisy and this and this mass issue and social distancing. Just this week, we had a major hypocrisy right occurring on national TV and nobody want to talk about it. Joe Biden was having a town hall on, um, on, um, on CNN. He's not wearing a mask, but he and Anderson Cooper, who is the host, was social distancing. We seen all of that going on, fine, no big deal. But while the cameras were still rolling, Joe Biden thought they were off camera. He walked over. He's not, he's not wearing a mask, remember that? He walks over to Anderson Cooper on national TV and whispers in Anderson Cooper's head. <laughs> okay, and I'm serious. <laughs> it may sound like a joke, but it's true. Okay, did you, but in did, did he, nobody in the media is talking about that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I just, just thought it. I just thought it was little girls. He whispered. Yeah, in, exactly. Uh, in I, 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 I was thinking maybe he was come up to sniff Anderson Cooper's hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd be able to uh, control himself in an administration and not yeah. come up close to people and start sniffing their Gosh, hair. Just, Joe is uh, more senile than I thought. I'm he's, serious, uh, man. I'm he's, serious. He's, uh, he can't even determine when he's around a young girl or an older gentleman. It's, it's, Tell me this. And this is the man. And this is the man we're gonna turn the reins of power over to. Oh my goodness <laughs> gracious! I mean, oh, listen. Yeah. I am yeah. no big uh, fan of Donald Trump, but I'll take uh, Donald Trump every day of the week and twice on Sundays. Over this half seen old man, believe me. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, of uh, trying to get out from under the uh, you know this lockdown stuff as well, and what's essential, you know, the schools are back, uh, you know, into their fall uh, semesters right now. But uh, many of them are doing this uh, essentially uh, <clears throat> through Zoom, I guess. You know, I mean, they're doing through distance learning, and so this is something that's near and dear to me because I have a couple of kids in school right now. Well, but um, it, it's one of those things where we're in this giant experiment right now, um, and we're seeing that uh, you know not only uh, is this not a very tried and true method that we're in, this is just something that's sort of thrown together, uh, you know, I, I essentially ad hoc. But it's it's something too that they're maybe playing some politics with this as well. I think in Los Angeles, uh, that's one of the largest school districts, I believe. The uh, the 
the person in charge of public health, I, I, I can't remember her, her name, but she had made a statement over some sometime over the last week saying that uh, she didn't believe that kids would be back in school at least until after the election. I mean, what is magical about the election? What day? is the connection? Yeah, yes. What is the connection? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I can understand if she said, you know, well, we think maybe we've heard from public health officials that maybe around December things might be, you know, relaxed or maybe in October. But to sit there and say the election, I, that's that's the bizarre benchmark for when kids should be in school and when they shouldn't be in school. Uh, you know, yeah. hey, you guys have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think she's right. At least she's being honest. Uh, about her, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's it's all Donald Trump's fault, don't you know? And as soon as of we course. have yes. confirmation that our uh, fearless leader, Mr. Uh, Senile Joe Biden, is is uh, destined for the office, all of a sudden, you know, then uh, th things better open up and open up quick. I mean, we've got to have a... a, a a very uh, robust economic boost uh, when Joe Biden hits the ground running in January uh, 22nd or 3rd or whatever. And uh, we got to get things rolling here because uh, there can't be any of this nonsense lockdown under the Democrats rule. Are you kidding? That would, uh, <laughs> that would ruin everything. Uh, gee, Willikers. So, uh, yeah, I think she's... Uh, got a very valid point there and uh you know all of a sudden the data that they have been uh putting under the rug for all this time the positive data about <clears throat> about you know the severity of of the pandemic and and the efficacy of the lockdowns and uh, they're, all of a sudden, that data is going to be front and center on the news because, boom, hey, we've got, you know, all all is, you know, puppies are warmer, uh, kitties purr louder, the grass is greener, the sky is bluer, we have a Democrat in the presidency, and ain't things grand again. Yes, yes. Well, you know, it's, oh, sorry, go ahead, Leon. No, go ahead. Finish your thought. Go ahead. Finish your thought. I'm sorry. Well, I, I just wanted to mention, too, that it's not just, uh, you know, the, the, the politics gets a little thicker. The uh, Los Angeles uh, Teachers Union had also said that they were going to, uh, that, that they were literally going to push from going back into the classes until they had some of their demands met. And some of these demands had to do with defunding the police. Funding the police, I, yes. I, I can't even imagine how that's connected to our kids' education. That was one of them. And then they uh, also were pushing for uh, health care for all, which, again, it's not really a subject that's connected to our, our uh, education. So, you know, just uh, absolutely is beyond the pale, you know, uh, how this, this stuff is, how our kids educate. I mean, you talk about a group that is, you know, being disproportionately impacted by this, uh, you know, by this COVID, and it's the children who are literally having their lives massively disrupted and they're the least at risk in in this whole thing yes. and yet yeah. you know uh, it, you know their educations their milestones all that stuff is just you know the, the trajectories of their lives literally in many cases you know uh, uh it just it's absolutely appalling uh -oh. you always hear you always hear these damn people the the teachers unions and the and, and some of these teachers I, I don't have a problem with teachers i have two sisters who have who are lifelong teachers but some of them, the, the unions in particular, they always talk about, oh, all they care about is the kids. All we care about is the kids. But then you look at the demands that these people are now making to go back in the classroom. You raise one, defunding the police, health care for all, and all this other damn nonsense that have nothing to do with education. They wouldn't teach them reading, writing, and arithmetic, but they want to teach them all about social justice. They wouldn't do any of the things that they're supposed to do, and they're making all these new demands. We're paying them more and more salary every day. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Speaking, of justice. <laughs> Speaking of social justice, we're at the point of our knucklehead noise patrol where we try and talk about something yeah. just crazy that's going on out there, uh, you know, in, in the world, usually uh, connected to politics. And uh, this time, it's it's actually the Oscars that have come forward. It's Oscar himself, uh, you know, for the, the movie uh, industry is 
come forward and uh, he said something absolutely outlandish. I mean, we all kind of knew that uh, social justice was part of how they decided, you know, who was uh, which movie was best, right? You know, I mean, that's that's what the Oscars are supposed to say is which one is the best picture, who was the best actor, you know. But uh, you know, well, they've made it official now that you know the, some of these social justice goals are part of their uh, criteria, and so essentially they have said that they're now. Uh, in 2024, uh, at least, uh, apparently there's, there's at least two check boxes that have to be checked off for diversity. And it has to do with, uh, either the, one of the lead actors has to be part of a group that includes, uh, you know, basically what you would expect it's either it has to be Asian, Hispanic or Latinx. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that means, a new term, I guess, but, but I, I think that's, that's what we used to call Latino, I guess. Uh, and then uh, Black or African American, Indigenous Native American, Middle Eastern, North African, Native Hawaiian, Pacific uh, Islander, or other uh, underrepresented race or ethnicity. And so they have all of these essentially uh, tied into not just the actor and the cast, but also the production crew. Uh, you know, the marketing, all of these different, you know, the artistic direction, all of these different things. You have to check off so many boxes or you can't be nominated for an Oscar. So, you know, it just, you guys have any thoughts on that? This is a crazy Leon, thing. you have, <laughs> Leon has a future. Leon has a future in acting. Most oh, definitely. Leon. Most definitely. I have, I have the right skin color. Take note. I have the right skin color. <laughs> and I'm also immigrant. Take note, I'm immigrant. Oh okay. Hey, because that's these two days, check marks. Check marks, yeah. Because these days, it's not the content of your character that matters. It is not the color <laughs> of your conduct. It is not the condition of your competence. None of that matters. What matters <laughs> is your ethnicity and the hue of your skin. You see, I have a future. Tim is right. I have a future. I have the right skin color. And I have the right accent too. Because I speak with this immigrant accent. Oh my God, that poor immigrant. They need my help. Those white liberals, they're always right there to ready to, oh, they're going to help me. They're going to solve my problems for me. This is what's going on right now. They're using new racism to solve the racism of the past. And they think they're going to lead us to utopia. God help us. Yeah, and also you've got the most styled beard I've ever seen. I mean, that there thing is go. awesome. There you go. There you go. <laughs> box, box checked. Box checked. Hey, check. Check. Leon, you may be lighting us up for an Oscar for this show. There you go. <laughs> 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 I'm just glad to see that we are in line with the new Oscar standards already. So. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you have to be told to do it. <laughs> no, notice, notice one third, one third of this show is non-white. So hey, I'm sure, I'm sure we pass the standard. <laughs> You're already one third, skewing. One third is also immigrant. Take note. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me wrap it up real quick because we're uh, running over time. But uh, so you have to have the last word again, Leon. Uh, thanks again for joining us. If you want to catch more of our shows, you catch us at Libertarian Counterpoint, uh, public access on Sacramento Channel 17, or uh, LibertarianCounterpoint.com, or, or Libertarian Fa yeah, Counterpoint Facebook page as well. If you want to see some of our past shows.